I'm pleased with the amount of yield we're getting off here. This is not bad at all. It's looking like we're going to be in the range of maybe 15,000 litres off both fields. Uh, I would be very happy with that. That would be a good amount for our canola. Hello and welcome along and welcome back to No Man's Land. We are heading into our fields of canola today. We've got them to get harvested. So I'm just bringing my Massey up to here where we've got our combine to get this started. Uh, expecting a fairly good yield off here. We currently have a 100% yield bonus on here. 19, yeah, it's 100%. Uh, it's a bit difficult to tell at the edge of the fields. But it is pretty much spot on. So we're going to take our John Deere uh, 4400 combine here. Which I absolutely love this combine. As I said, every, pretty much every time I've used it, this combine is probably from the era when I was really young. Well, this is a 1977 combine, so it is as old as I am, which is uh, which is quite cool. Um, and I'm pretty sure we had one of these on the farm, or at least one of this sort of era of John Deere combine uh, with the David Brown. So if I ever get a David Brown into farm sim, I will be bringing these combines back in order to uh, to use them with it. Um, because, yeah, that would be a fantastic setup. However, today, what we're going to be doing is getting around, getting this canola cut. And, uh, and then I want to start turning these fields around. We are looking to get this field uh, replanted with barley and our other fields replanted with canola. Our canola window closes in the near future, I think. So we want to get next year's canola planted uh, fairly swiftly and uh, and the barley as well and then we're probably gonna be able to jump forward a bit and uh, with any luck get one more harvest out of here all depends on whether we expand the farm as well but um, at some point we are gonna have to move on and I'm just very aware of that However, we are going to at least play out this year. We'll see how far we get. Uh, see where we get. See see what position that the farm is in. I think, I think we're going to be in a place where uh, someone could take this over and expand this and go from there. At the moment, it's one of those things where I'm kind of looking out for uh, the next map. I want to go and do something with the uh, Ford tractors that came out recently. I, I really, really want to do a map with those uh, and have some fun with that. I also have, uh, coming up, uh, Stone Valley. I, I have a wonderful idea for a series on there uh, that I want to have a play around with. So that is something for the near future. Also, of course, Attingham Park is imminently uh, releasing. So we want to be working around that as well. So, yeah, it's, it is going to have to be a change to the schedule in the near future. We're 48 episodes into this. I think this is our 48th episode. Uh, and we've done a good three years, I think, at this point on this farm. So it is a well-developed farm at the moment. And I always said in uh, that my aim in this series was to get the farm... Well, was to pay off the loan, which we're not quite at yet, but... If this farm just kept being farmed from this point forwards, it's stable. It has a good income and uh, very easily could pay off the loans. So, yeah, we have, we have pretty much achieved what I was trying to achieve on this series. Getting ourselves set up, getting ourselves a steady income and going from there. I know there's an awful lot of people who really enjoy this series. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope I hope you will enjoy whatever we go to next. However, uh, as I said, we're not quite done here yet. We need to see what this year's harvest does, see where we come from, and uh, and go from there. Two headlands done, and we are at fifty-three percent. I think we might take another headland out and then uh, empty the combine. 
Uh, it is, yeah, it, it needs a little bit more turning circle, especially with the overshoot and the uh, and the fairly awful brakes that are on this. So just to give ourselves a little bit more space, I think we will go with that. Just keeping that front divider in here. That is, uh, it's, it's, I do like this combine a lot. It does exactly what I want it to do. It's perfect for a farm this sort of size. Yeah, we've not got massive, massive fields on here. And should do, or has done, in fact, really, really well. It's also got a big enough tank to fill on here without having to empty too often. Which, as we don't have a combine, uh, as we don't have a tractor driver, a carter on here... Uh, is pretty good for us as well. We're able to just sort of keep going around the field, occasionally empty it, and yeah, I think we only end up with a couple of uh, empties per field, which is which is good. Um, I think we need a bigger trailer, as I've said before, but uh, certainly at the moment we're doing okay. And after three headlands, we're only 75% full. Or actually, only 72% full. So, what I'm going to do is open up the field. We will head here. Get ourselves on a good uh, line. No, not that. That. That's the line I want. Right. There we go. Using our compass to make sure we're heading the right direction. And then try and keep on a nice 180 degrees as we cut in and open this field up. And I'm pleased with the amount of yield we're getting off here. This is not bad at all. It's looking like we're going to be in the range of maybe 15,000 litres off both fields. Uh, I would be very happy with that. That would be a good amount for our canola. And a good question on yesterday's Hope Belleron video uh, as to why I open up the field like this, why I cut um, cut into it and then uh, work around like this. Uh, it's a fuel saver. It gives you the ability to uh, travel less distance all the time for doing uh, for cutting the field. Plus. It always means your auger is available to uh, to empty from. In fact, I have made a mistake on today's video in that this auger on this combine should be out all the time. On a combine this age, uh, as I mentioned when we've been using it before, uh, you don't have anything stopping the grains going out from the auger uh, if, if the auger's not up like this. And so, yeah, we would have just had grain trickling all along the field. We are at 99%. Yeah, there we go. So let's go and empty this. So turn off our thresher. And we'll just head over here and do this. Rather than bring the tractor over, much quicker for us to just take the combine there. And empty it out. Like so. Yeah, so we should leave the auger out on this combine. Uh, something to note. Otherwise, uh, we're not using it properly. And I want to make sure that, of course, I am using it properly. And there we go. Emptied. Uh, leave the auger out. And then we can go and uh, cut into the field. This is the other reason as well why we keep the auger in during the first headland. Um, because if you've always got to have the auger out on this combine, uh, you have a good chance that you're going to whack it on a tree or something if you aren't too careful during that first headland. So you want to uh, avoid damaging it if you possibly can. And yeah, the easiest way to do that is to do your first cut around the edge of the field with the auger into the field, with the second cut and beyond always having the auger available in case you want to unload it. Finishing off the last bit of the field, and we are uh, going to have about 2,000 litres off this second load, so not enough to fill the trailer, uh, but enough to uh, to give us that halfway point 
towards 15,000 litres, which is great news. Uh, in fact, I think we might even be there now, which is, uh, yeah, which will be absolutely brilliant news. 15,000 litres off here will uh, probably earn us about £20,000, I think, in total. Uh, if I've got my amounts for my canola right. So that is a uh, a really, really good amount that we will uh, we will get for our canola crop this year. Uh, should, again, I, I want to, I really would like to get to the point at the end of this year where the farm is ready to expand, where we're ready to get that next piece of land. We don't have a lot of equipment that we need. Uh, a new trailer might be nice that, that better matches the combine. Although, only really if we're going to expand the fields. So, if we expand and make our fields a little bit bigger, then, yeah, we might need uh, extra um, space in the trailer. But as you can see from this, we are not going to be doing much in the way of filling this trailer 97 percent 7793 liters is brilliant so uh turn the combine off and we'll get the tractor and trailer we're going to tip this and uh then we'll get stuck into our second field uh but all in all looks like we're getting a pretty good yield off it now, of course, canola isn't a great indicator of how much space we need in the trailer. Just getting uh, getting just less than a trailer off these canola fields is not bad at all. But we know the barley has a higher yield overall. And as a result, we end up doing multiple trips. If I can do two full combines off here... Uh, that works really well for us. Actually, here is a perfect example of why you do not leave your... Uh, or why you put your auger into your field while you're doing this first headland. That would have dented it pretty badly if we caught that tree on that auger then. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's the reasoning for it. You want to make sure that you are uh, nicely protecting that. Otherwise, you just won't be able to unload your brains from your combine this field can be a little bit bit misleading we are most of the way around the second headland and we have hit 50 percent full uh, now that is partly because compared to the previous field this is a much longer thinner field so we end up having more headland uh, well, more crop in the headland than we did in the previous field, which is a much squarer one. Uh, as a result, we end up, yeah, with a uh, with a lot more uh, of the actual grains as part of this too. And, uh, yeah, makes the whole field look like it's got a better yield than it probably has compared to the other one. We're still going to do three headlands. We still need the space to turn around at the ends. Uh, but it looks to me like we're going to be emptying a not full grain tank in order to make sure we can cut in and have enough space to unload rather than um, going to a full tank this time on this one. Uh, which will uh, work out better for us. It'll give us far less problems and we know that we don't or can't do two full tanks into the trailer off this combine anyway. Headland's almost complete. And I'm just looking over at my chickens. And I can see over there we've got at least one pallet of eggs. Uh, we are most of the way there on lettuce from the greenhouse. We're full on potatoes and tomatoes as well. So there's plenty of income to be had on here. Uh, we are 82% full in the combine. So before we cut in, let's empty it out. Uh, so there we go. And this then will free up the combine to get the rest of the field cut. And there we go. That is the combine emptied. So we can now cut in here and get the rest of this out. God, we got another 5,000 litres off this. Which is not completely out of the realm of possibility. 
Uh, that would be 10,000 litres off this field. That would be a higher uh, yield off here than the other field. And uh, a pretty spectacular one at that. So it does surprise me. We are looking at getting closer to 3,000 litres than 5,000 litres off here. And that's, that's mainly due actually to the top ends of the headlands. We, of course, are getting uh, about the same number of rows in the actual main body of the field. But, of course, on the headlands, we get the uh, the top ends across as well, which add up to more. So, yeah, it does mean that we are getting less in the middle here than I expected. It is still going to be uh, around about 8,000 litres. In fact, that's, it's still going to be... Probably more than we can fit in the trailer off here. So that is a larger amount of this field than the other one that we've just done. So uh, happy about that. That is easily going to hit our 15,000 litres. Probably will will actually hit uh, 16,000 litres, which is even better. Uh, makes me very, very happy to see that. Uh, and we've got it all done by sort of early afternoon. Which means that we're going to have time today to get on with another job. Which is uh, which is good. It means that we're, we're going to be nicely getting ahead. I want to get our fields planted. I want to get the canola in. Because I think, checking this... I oh know, we're alright. So we've got September. I'm actually going to plant the canola in September then. We will concentrate on getting... Uh, these two fields turned around and ready for planting as well. So what we'll do is we'll get a hired worker working on getting these ploughed. Uh, because, yeah, that's probably the best way to go with this. And then uh, we'll take our Massey here down to the shop and grab some seeds while we still have some money to get our fields planted i think we'll only need a single bag uh maybe two but i'm gonna start with a single bag of seed uh to get well to get all four planted that may be uh, maybe not maybe we do need to get more seed than just a single bag in which case we probably need to start looking at some stuff we can sell as well uh but let's empty this out and yeah, about 2,800 litres. I think this trailer's going to be full. If not, then we're going to have about the same amount of this field as we had of the other one. And we're coming close to it now. Just, there we go. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. 8,000 litres in the tractor. Let's leave the combine there for a minute. Start this up. So that is 16,000 litres that we've got today. Because we were at about 98%, I think it was, for the other field. And we are at 100% full on the trailer, plus a bit of this field. That should be 16,000 litres of canola. Uh, that's pretty huge. Now, somebody suggested I get the windmill on here. Um, now, I've got it on Hope Belleron. I, I don't really want to be doubling up things like that. Uh, I'd prefer not to. Uh, it would do both our canola, though, and our uh, barley if we wanted it to. So it's it's a difficult one. I'll leave, leave it up to you guys. What do you think? Should we have the windmill on here uh, as well as having it on Hope Belleron? Uh, it would fit rather nicely uh, next to our entrance here. Or maybe... Oh, if I put it in the middle of the trees, there's no way that that will get any wind in there. So, yeah, it's it's a case of where do I put it if we uh, if we get it. Oh, we could put it in the middle here. That would work out pretty well as well. Right, let's get the last 200 litres out of the combine. Uh, like so. Uh, oh, yeah, and whoa, let's not put it over the cab. And so, uh, the other thing I really want to get, and something that's high on my list, uh, is a uh, is a pressure washer. We need desperately to wash this combine before we put it away this year. Otherwise, 
Uh, it's likely to end up in flames uh, if we don't do that. Yeah, 206 litres uh, is all that's left in this trailer. And... Yes, yeah, September is going to be our planting month. We will get all of our canola and all of our barley planted in September. And that will uh, work out fairly well for us, I think. So we just need to finish getting these two fields ready. Turn that off. We'll bring the combine back to the yard. And then we'll look at our options going forwards. So we have two immediate jobs on the farm. We need to get uh, these two fields mulched and we need to get uh, this field here rolled. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to get uh, I'm going to get the roller out on our other tractor uh, and we'll we'll mulch these two and then we'll roll that and that should cover us. Currently got it assigned to or currently got it attached to the cedar because i thought that was going to be my next job but considering the amount of work we have to do after we plant uh with rolling as well and the amount of stuff that we've got kicking around the farm i think it's going to be better for us uh just to get these jobs out the way uh and go from there uh, yeah if we can get if we can get these fields mulched today and then get the uh, and get the grass field rolled. That will get those jobs out of the way. And then that means next game day, what we can do is plow and de-stone the two canola fields, giving us a really good entry into September with everything in place and everything ready to do all of our seeding. Uh, get that all done and then go forward from there. Next time, I am going to have to check on my productions. And we're probably going to have to do some selling on the production stuff. So, let's drop that down. Burst it up a little bit. There we go. And uh, so, yeah, as a result of that, we will set this tractor off doing some plowing next time. While we load up with some of our produce... Uh, go and sell that and in return bring back some seeds and items to get ourselves set up ready for that planting session in September. This is a nice efficient job and I'm really pleased with our efficiency on here in general at the moment. Uh, getting these fields turned around this quickly uh, will make a difference to us. Uh, just gonna speed things up so much and uh, the extra bit of income from our productions is uh, definitely going to allow us to get this year's seeds all done and dusted we shouldn't need uh yeah we should only need to do maybe i don't know i'm trying to think if uh, how much we can get away with on the fertilizing front but i still think we need to do two full spreads of fertilizer unfortunately fertilizer is the expensive bit we can get a bag of seeds for about 800 pounds a bag of fertilizer will cost us 1800 pounds so it's it's you know a lot more expensive we do have a little bit um we are going to have to buy some more though for our gardens as well our open air gardens are going to need a bit more uh, fertilizer and seed uh, in the near future so that we're gonna have to buy enough for that uh, tomorrow as well but then that is why we're gonna load up on tomatoes first uh, and uh, and get them sold we're, we're holding on to the potatoes we want to get a really good cover uh, a really good price for the potatoes which will be a very big December sell-off which is another reason for getting a new trailer uh, if we can load a new dedicated trailer with potatoes, uh, that will work very well for us. Right, let's see our mulching coverage. A tiny bit at that top corner, so I'm less worried about that, I think. Uh, mulching, where are you? There you go. Yep, so, uh, yeah, that's the whole field covered. Uh, there, there is a tiny bit, as I said, that top corner, but that's all right. I'm not going to... Uh, do that for all of that. 
There we go. Done. And we now got to go and do the second one. I'm really pleased at the progress we've made on this uh, map or here on No Man's Land. It is amazing how far we've come in these uh, first couple of years. I do want to get something to... Uh, yeah, I'm still not 100% certain about this tractor. I would, uh, I would quite like something, uh, something to replace it with eventually. Um, it is, it is what it is. You know, it was 16 grand, and it's doing a absolutely bang up job of what we need it to on here. So I've, I've no wish to spend more money uh, to replace it. Uh, but yeah, considering we sort of started with the Massey on here, I would like to have remained with the Massey. But that, yeah, is unfortunately not a choice. We did have one come up and just didn't have the money for it at the time, which is always heartbreaking. Uh, but as you can see, it is doing the job really, really well with this mulcher. And uh, it's really good, actually, on the stone picker as well. Because it's got that little bit more power. Uh, especially on the uh, hilly bits on this field. Uh, it's very, very good at uh, getting those bits covered. And making sure that we can still continue to work efficiently and quickly across these fields. One thing I love is the sound of... Uh, the stubble as we're going over and as and it, as it's breaking down it's just really subtle i don't know if you guys can hear that but it's just one of those great little sound effects great little add-ons that fs22 has that that just adds to the realism a little bit it's especially good if you're doing a cabless tractor like this you could you can hear it much more clearly uh, than you're than if you're in a cabbed one because it is quite a subtle sound um but it just adds to it so much i i yeah i i love the little touches like that it's just utterly brilliant and oh there we go round get this last little bit uh and then we can disconnect this and put it roughly where those deer are and then go and roll our grass field that will make it ready for us to do a cut in october which is where we're aiming to do our next cut let's lift that up and fold it there we go and with uh yeah with that done uh we're then in a great position we can get these fields uh plowed and de-stoned and then as i said going into september it will be seeding season and we'll get everything seeded and rolled which should be brilliant right let's leave this here drop that off turn around oh tree there we did miss it good well i got a couple of branches in the face and then we can connect up to our roller we are gonna have to repair this tractor sometime soon though i've just noticed that it's um it's looking a little bit worse for wear but this this will work very nicely this bro seems to struggle a little bit more than the massey with this roller which is surprising considering it's got more horsepower uh than the massey does but yeah, I've had to drop down a gear and it doesn't keep, seem to have quite as much pulling power as the little red tractor, which is a little bit odd. This is the first time I've used this as a uh, as a rolling tractor. Um, and yeah, it, it doesn't seem to particularly like doing this job. Uh, I am going to try and roll this a little bit differently. I'm always... Uh, going around the edges and, and trying to work my way in. And it creates a little bit of a funny bit in the middle. So we're going to try and divide the field in half. And just expand our way out of there, I think, this time. Uh, this also field that's quite nice to work at this time of day. You get the, uh, you, you get the sun shaded by the trees. 
and so it, it doesn't get too warm or too hot so uh, as a result it's quite a pleasant place to be and hear the helicopter going over there it is yeah they're on a they're on a hunt for whatever that sound is that we keep hearing every so often yeah and then we have that patch there to fill in but it should be a little bit more efficient being a, a little bit squarer I think doing it this way and I uh, rolled this end of the field here uh, got that all rolled and uh, makes it much easier to manage the rest of this as a result rolling it this way has worked pretty well uh, we've got to have sort of multiple weird triangles now though so yeah maybe not quite as efficient as the other way we're doing it certainly reduce the amount of uh, turning I had to do or, or reduce the sharpness of the turns that I had to do which does make the job easier in general but we we got a bit of a weird triangle bit here we've got a bit of a weird triangle bit down the corner well in the in the central bit and down the bottom corner so we're still going to have quite big turns to do I think it, what I need to do is work out exactly what is the best angle to cover the most of this field we can and uh, and then go from there and that will then help because as you can see here i'm still having to go fairly sharply to make it round this create a bit of a teardrop shape at the end i'm gonna have to deal with and i've got to drive quite a way back down the field to come and get that last bit so yeah that's not the most efficient uh, and then we've got to go and get that bit uh, over there under the trees as well. So a bit more to do. But it hasn't taken us very long to do it. And we've just got this last little bit here. I don't want to do a split. Nope, we're good. Let's just grab that last little section. Yeah, this is still a very odd shaped field. And this is why it's a grass field and not an arable field. Uh, trying to... Wow, oh, uh, trying to get the most out of this field as an arable field would be a real pain. So that's why we've not done that. I'm considering, mm, I don't know, there are options as to what we can do around here. I think we've got this patch of grass here that doesn't really do anything at the moment. I uh, was thinking of possibly moving the farmyard into it and uh and doing it that way so it's past the house rather than near the house but i quite like where my farmyard is now so i think we're, we're gonna have to have a rethink with that a little bit more but uh yeah next time we are going to earn a bit of money we're gonna sell some tomatoes um because they will do pretty well for us uh we need to get some more seeds uh, well, we need to get a load more seeds. We need to put a load more into our open gardens. Uh, and we need, of course, a load to get our fields seeded in September. Um, we're going to get this tractor on the plough and get our two mulched fields ploughed and uh, and hopefully de-stoned once we get back from the store and get back from moving stuff. Uh, otherwise, though, we are pretty much all done for today. So we're just going to back this up here. Get this put away. And then I'll put my tractors away in a moment as well. But, uh, yeah, there we go. So we are going to leave that here for today. Which means all that remains is for me to say... Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. Special thanks to all my patrons and channel members. Your support is invaluable in making these videos and helping the channel to grow. For more from Virtual Farmer, check out the links below, follow on Twitch to watch live, and for more videos, subscribe and ring that bell. I will see you next time. Goodbye.